Hebrews chapter 6, starting in verse 10, it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Uh, the title of my sermon is The Lot of the Lazy. And uh, this, this was uh, inspired by last month. I missed last month's uh, preaching uh, day because uh, I had to work. But uh, this was inspired by Ground Groundhog Day. Because um, if everyone knows the groundhog, right? Puxatani Phil. He is the laziest rodent that I have ever heard of. <laughs> Every winter he comes out. And I don't think I've heard one where he was like, okay, I've slept enough, right? I'm going to come out and it's going to be springtime. No, he, he goes back into his hole for another six weeks, right? He's, he's a lazy rodent, right? And the Bible says a lot about laziness and about how it's bad for us and how we should avoid it and we should work, right? So that's what I'm going to uh, uh, preach on tonight is uh, the punishment for being lazy and just to encourage all of us uh, to not be lazy. There's a lot that kind of gets rehashed um, as far as laziness goes. And we're just going to go through, um, you know, just touch the tip of the iceberg on this. But uh, if you would turn over to Proverbs chapter 12, we're going to begin in Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs deals with a lot about laziness. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 12. And verse 24 says this, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. The first thing we see about being lazy is that it puts us in bondage. Okay? Here we see that, you know, hey, if you're diligent, <clears throat> you're going to bear rule. You're going to be a leader. You're going to be influential. Right? But what's the opposite of this? <clears throat> the slothful shall be under tribute. Okay, what's tribute? Tribute's taxes, right? Tribute is, is somebody telling you what you're going to do, how you're going to live, you know, making your decisions for you. Yeah. Someone who's lazy, so lazy that they can't even run their own life, right, and has to be told, uh, let's use the government, for example. The government puts their hands in a whole lot uh, of, you know, American life, not even just American life, but world, the world, every government seems to like to do this, where, you know, they tell you, hey, we're going to decide what doctor you see, we're going to decide what food you should eat, and we're going to decide what your kids are going to be taught, yeah. right? Those people who give into that and go, oh, look, hey, the government's provided it, I'm just going to take it, right? They're abdicating the decisions in their life, what they could choose, and they're just giving it over to the government and allowing them to do that. They're being lazy yeah. with their life. They're just giving it over to the government, let somebody else make the decision. I'm going to pay them the taxes, whatever, and I'm just going to just live, you know, my own life and, and let the government take care of all the responsibility. Now, I'm not abdicating or I'm not... Uh, Encouraging anyone to not pay taxes because that would be a bad idea, but <laughs> you, you get the point I'm making. <clears throat> so we also see that being lazy makes you greedy over in uh, chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 25 says, the desire of the slothful killeth him for his hands refuse to labor. And then look at this next part. He coveteth greedily all day long but the righteous giveth and spareth not we see that these these lazy people they covet constantly right we're talking about people who just give over to the government and let them take care of everything people who live a lot of times people who live in the projects who get their ebt card who who have their rent paid by the government who send their kids off to government school and everything and they everything gets provided for them what, what do we hear from them? Oh, the, the rich should pay their fair share. They're paying 50, 60, sometimes 70% of their income already. And this lazy guy who's getting paid, you know, just to sit around the house is coveting 
the rest of the rich man's wealth, yeah. right? And he's not doing anything for it, but he, he's got that greed. He feels like he's entitled to something that's not his, yeah. right? And this greed <clears throat> does something, right? This greed also troubles uh, their own family. In Proverbs 15, 27, it says, He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. Right? We see that, you know, if you turn away that 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 free money from the government, right? You turn away from an easy ride, right? That that you'll live. Whereas that greedy guy, <clears throat> he troubles his own house. Right? He sends his kids off to school. He they get taught all sorts of garbage, which is just going to perpetuate the problem, which is going to make them whether, you know, turn them into a terrible person or get them in jail or whatever, you know? They learn the world instead of learning God, and and those decisions are no longer that that guy's decision. He can't control his own life, right? It troubles his own family. We also see that greed will kill you. Okay, uh, Proverbs 1, 18, 19 says, And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. Not some people. Everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. All right, so we see that that greed literally will kill you. Which brings me to my third point, that laziness is unhealthy for you. OK, there's nothing that I can think of that is more unhealthy than killing yourself. OK, that's pretty unhealthy. I think everyone would agree. Probably 10 out of 10. Right. <clears throat> Smoking, you know, drunkenness. We can all. Oh, that's really unhealthy. You're killing yourself. But then most people wouldn't look at someone who's lazy and say he's killing himself. Right. And that's exactly what he is doing. He is killing himself. Okay, we see that laziness, it's unhealthy, right? Because it makes you sleepy. There's another, right? Not only are you killing yourself through your laziness, it makes you sleepy. Proverbs 19.15 says, Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Okay, now let's make the distinction here. Sleep is good, okay? Sleep is good, just like ice cream is good. I like ice cream, right? <laughs> you get too much of that, though. If that is your desire, that is your love, that's going to harm you, okay? Uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5.12, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, right? If you spend your day laboring, right, and you get home, and you're like, you know what? I want a cup of ice cream, maybe a bowl of ice cream, right? And you partake in that? Hey, that's sweet, okay? But if you sit down and you're like, I'm not going to work today. I'm just going to eat ice cream. It's probably going to hurt you. Oh, yeah. I would think so, right? <clears throat> the same with this sleep. It says it casteth into a deep sleep, right? And that's not a, oh, I'm resting well. It's a, you're not paying attention to what's going around you. You're not making any decisions for yourself. You are literally just giving over to that sleep. Um, Proverbs, we, we see, here's the difference between the sleep of the lazy and the sleep of the laboring man. The sleep of the laboring man is sweet. All right. Proverbs 20 verse 13 says, love not, love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Right. That lazy man, that's his desire. That's his love. That's what he wants. He doesn't have any ambitions except oh, I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to sleep. Okay. And it's going to bring him to poverty. And the rest of that verse says, Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. All he has to do is, hey, get out of bed, go to work, do something, and you're going you're gonna to reap benefits from that. But no, he loves sleep, and so he's going to come to poverty. Which, which goes into the next point. Laziness makes you poor because of your desire. Sure. All right? That first desire, that desire of sleep. Right. I he loves sleep. He wants sleep. Right. And any doctor will tell you if you sleep too much that it is harmful for you. Right. It, it's amazing how if you sit at the house and you don't do anything, you get sleepy. 
right? But at the same time, if you get up and you go do something, you haven't eaten any more food, you haven't gotten any more sleep, you haven't, it's just that drive, your body wakes up, sure. right? That sleep is, is a, it feeds on itself. Yeah. You sleep too much and you're gonna sleep more, yeah. right? We see that his sleep is his desire, okay? We also see that one of his desires is comfort. A uh, few verses in uh, the same chapter, Proverbs 20, verse 4, it says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. Now, here in Florida, it might not be the cold, it might be the heat. You know, hey, well, I'm, I'm not going to go cut the grass today because it's hot, right? Well, what if cutting grass is your job, right? And you don't go cut the grass. You're not going to get paid. Guess what? You're not going to have anything. And when it comes to the time of the year where it, oh, it just feels great. Okay, I'll go cut grass now. It's not growing, right? You're going to cut it once. You're not going to have a job, right? <clears throat> Our comfort is not nearly as important as the labor, right? And we see that the slothful man, because of his desire, that desire for sleep, that desire for uh, comfort, that he, he, he harms himself, right? As a side note, um, I, I said that, uh, you know, that we're made poor, but the lazy are made poor through their desire, their desire of sleep, their desire of comfort. And I'm not uh, encouraging anyone to desire riches, right? Because sometimes that is a natural reaction to... Uh, you know, hey, you're being lazy. No, you need to drive and you need to become rich and you need to. No, that's not what what you need to do. We see a um, a humble man in Proverbs chapter 30. Brother Jake touched on this. Proverbs 30 verse 8. The same man says, "Remove far from me vanity and lies. Lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me." Right? He's saying, give me enough. Why does he say that? Lest I be full, hey, lest I be rich and deny thee, talking to God, and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Okay? We shouldn't <clears throat> desire to be rich as a, as a reaction to being lazy. Right. And and just because you're poor doesn't necessarily mean that you're lazy either. Right. You may be going through a hardship. You might be going through something. Maybe the Lord has given you that as a test. Sure. But if you're poor because you're lazy, that's your own fault. That is not your lot in life. That is what you've done to yourself. That is your punishment. So let's let's keep that in mind when we when we desire, you know, not to be lazy. Let's not desire to be rich. Now, the last point, Proverbs 18, verse 9. If you would turn to Proverbs 12, verse 27, that's going to be the last verse I read. Proverbs 18, 9 says this. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Okay? This says, hey, look, the lazy guy is brother to him that doesn't use his resources wisely. Mm -hmm. He's somebody who just takes something that's good and destroys it. He's a waster, okay? He, he doesn't use what God's given him and in the time that God's given it to him. Don't waste your opportunities. Okay, Proverbs 20, or I'm sorry, Proverbs 12, verse 27 says this. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. We see that, hey, the lazy guy goes out and he, he does the fun stuff, right? He sits in the deer stand, he waits. Oh, deer. All right, got him, cool. Nah, you know what? I don't really want to drag him half a mile to the truck. I'm just gonna leave him here, right? Because dragging a deer through the woods for half a mile you know, the bigger the deer, the better the hunt, the worse the, the end is, right? It's, it's, it's that, you know, you got your reward there, you got to have fun, but now you got to work, okay? And the slothful doesn't roast that which he, he killed in hunting. 
Okay, and, and I make this comparison, and this is where the rubber meets the road for us. Okay, I make that comparison to we are fishers of men. Okay, and we go out and we get to do the fun stuff. We get to go out and we get to find the places where the fish are biting, yeah. where people are willing to listen to us, and we can give them the gospel, yeah. right? And then somebody gets saved. Mm -hmm. We're like, yes, got it. Yeah. Now I'm just going to leave him right there on the, on the dock, and I'm going to let that fish just rot. Okay? That's a good point. Or do we put aside the laziness? Do we put that aside and we say, you know what? I'm going to take this man that I just got, yeah. or woman that I just got, and I'm going to prepare him. Come on. I'm going to prepare him to serve the Lord. Good. I'm going to prepare him uh, to add to his faith. Yeah. I'm going to prepare him to be a productive Christian. I like right? To be a, a tree that's going to bear much fruit. Are we going to do that, or are we just going to do the exciting stuff and then leave the hard work? Because uh, discipling is not easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy, right? You get the fish on the on the dock, and your fight's not over. You go to pick up that fish, and uh, it's wiggling around, you know, and you just got to get it. Sometimes these guys who get saved, you know, hey, you got to go back. Hey, you need to come to church. Okay, I'll come to church. Good. You think you got them? And, oh, they wiggle out. They don't come to church, right? You got to go back. You got to work. You've got to try that. And I know that. We've been encouraged to do that. We've been encouraged to disciple. And I really, I know I've dropped the ball in, in the past. And I'd like to see all of us not drop the ball and do the best we can uh, to prepare those that we've, that we've won yeah. to be productive uh, Christians, to be fishers of men ourselves. And I'd like to encourage everyone to do that and not to be lazy in God's work and uh, just to apply uh, what God's given us to do. Very Amen. Lord, I just thank you so much for your word. I ask you to please uh, bless the next man who comes up, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.